and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Now, unfortunately in the world of YouTube, filming does not always go to plan, and today was one of those days. As incredible as it was to check out a 1960s Mercedes 300 SL Roadster, a number of things started to go wrong throughout the day, which meant my video ended up slightly dodgy. However, before I show you the footage, I wanted to explain a few little things first to kind of excuse myself, if that's possible. So first things first, the incredibly generous owner who invited me to film the car didn't actually want to be in the video. And whilst that might sound like it would be the dream, it actually makes things a little bit tougher for me because especially a car like that is quite small, so it's quite hard not to include them in a lot of the footage. Second thing is, that car is worth around a million dollars. I am nowhere near experienced or confident enough to just jump into a car like that and hoon it around LA streets. So, I was a bit intimidated about the driving experience. And finally, it's also a very old car and a very unique car. It's got a massive steering wheel, as you're about to see, a really tight, close pedal box, and an H pattern gearbox, lots of things that I just wasn't used to. So, as a driving experience, I was pretty much cat myself but at the same time I was completely honored and so excited to get up close and to experience that car so I'll stop banging on and check out exactly what took place when we went for a drive in a 1960s Mercedes 300 SL Roadster Now my very first um, impression of this car is the steering wheel is huge, like I, can't, I literally feel like I'm driving a truck, it is massive, it hardly fits under my legs. But we're going to look past that because everything else about this car is insanely cool. Um, first gear, handbrake, and in theory we are ready to roll. I've got a very small... It's like a GoPro wing mirror. <laughs> Frog eye wing mirror. Let's see if we can. He rolls away. Just. There we go. There we go. <laughs> now, driving down here just a second ago, this car sounds insane. So, we will be opening it up at some point. I'm just getting used to the fact that I've got drum brakes on this car, which, ah, an interesting feel. You always have to call, slam the pedal down before anything happens. But yeah, I mean, what an experience. This is definitely, I think, gonna trump most of my other driving experiences here in LA. It makes the Challenger suddenly look a little bit, um, a little bit basic. I try not to wind that clutch too much. There we go, we're away, we're away, finally. <laughs> Let's hope I don't have to stop again. Okay, we've got a, an H box. <laughs> oh my God, there's so much to get used to. <laughs> this is such a different driving experience to anything I usually drive, but also incredibly cool. Oh, it died. What the fuck? Oh. All right, turn it. Turn. What the fuck? All right, throttle. Fuel? Are you serious? I got a fuel level going. Alright, hold on. Yeah, you, you take it. Yeah, let me push it to the right. Push me over? Yeah. Alright, go right. Go, go, go. There you go. Brake. Brake. I think we should be good. Thank you, Okay, we're in the rescue mobile, which is one of the loudest C63s I've ever heard in my life. And we're reversing at high speed. <laughs> oh, and we're off to rescue the 300 or so, which just was stranded, stranded on the roadside. You've done this before. 
Attempt number two, I am staying well clear of that driver's seat now and I'm going to be firmly sat in the passenger seat. We're away! Success! Great success! Since coming to LA, another thing I've realised is that apart from people looking cool, they also have a certain driving style, especially in convertibles. It's not usually this style. <laughs> Most people in convertibles cruise around about 35 miles an hour in their Aventadors, just being looked at or looking at things. This car is being driven like a bloody Hoonmobile. cars you do just have to be careful with them you have to coax them you have to love them they're not like your Aventadors that you can just jump in and hoon and it was just being explained to me that the fan in this car doesn't run automatically it's only running when you're moving and it is an incredibly hot basically November day I know it's still officially October but for video purposes let's call it November to add drama unfortunately the car is still not that happy Emergency return home mission. It's a day of missions. Fingers crossed we make it. Our worst nightmare, a red Great. light. Are we out? Yeah. Do you need to jump out? Yeah, we're gonna have to push it uh, okay. to the right. Uh, All right, thanks. <laughs> no worries. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, shit! <laughs> it's not a light car. Uh. Yep, I got you. Uh. Second gym session of the day. Ooh. We're good. Like what? Yeah, you're rolling right now. Right here, right here. Charger comes out again. All the battery. We don't want to stop anywhere now. We're going to run every red light. <laughs> but we're moving it's at least. Fine, dude. It's the battery. Look, it's the battery. Yeah, yeah. Once the battery's charged, you're. And now we're good. Now we're good. Running with the battery. So unfortunately I think that is just part of owning a classic. Of course when they're running it is one of the best and most unique experiences you can have driving a car. <laughs> However, for me it seems like half the time is spent uh, fixing a car or having it broken down on the side of the road. So I guess I got the uh, true authentic experience of driving and using a classic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video anyway. A huge thanks to the owner for the opportunity. A shame it didn't work out as planned but I still had an incredible time. Make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.